With today technology, does electric car really better than internal combustion car? If there will be flying car, would it be internal combustion car or electric car? When will electric vehicle become majority? Which one has better efficiency energy-wise, electric vehicle or internal combustion vehicle? To answer these we will use this category as comparison. Energy density, which is refers to the amount of energy that can be stored per unit of mass or volume. Energy conversion efficiency, which we will conclude the final conversion rate, accumulation of each step of fuel and power generated. From refinery, power plant, transport loss, and car efficiency. Energy per kilometer. As assumption of energy use per distance in different condition like speed and the reason. Energy loss usage. The loss that happened in the driving, whether it is driving style or driving condition. Let's start the first category. Energy density. We will use typical lithium-based battery for electric vehicle and. In internal combustion engines, the fuel is typically gasoline or diesel. Let's say, the energy density of gasoline is approximately 9.7 kWh per liter, while the energy density of diesel is about 10.7 kWh per liter, divided by substase density we convert that to per mass value. M. This means that a typical car with a fuel tank of 70 liters can store 665 to 749 kWh of energy, which can power the engine for 700 to 1000 km assuming the average fuel efficiency is 10 km per liter. That's 53 to 58 kg additional weight in form of fuel. On the other hand, the energy density of electric vehicles' batteries can range from around 0.18 kWh per kilogram to 0.3 kWh per kilogram. A typical electric vehicle with a battery pack of 100 kWh can power the EV up to around 650 km. That's mean around 300 to 550 kg additional weight in form of batteries. That's almost 10 times additional weight of batteries compared to the fuel. Additionally, we can also compare the weight. Let's say, internal combustion engine is weighed around 150 to 250 kg, and electric vehicle motor is around 30 to 50 kg. Adding with fuel and batteries, internal combustion can get to 300 kg and electric vehicle can get to 600 kg. Still EV is heavier. Thus, in terms of energy density, gasoline and diesel fuels have a clear advantage over battery, allowing internal combustion engines to have a longer range and higher power output per unit of weight or volume. Okay, next one is energy conversion efficiency. These are the subcategory that we will use. For the internal combustion car we will go from crude oil refinery, the fuel transportation from storage tank to fuel station, and to engine where the energy from fuel finally converted into motion. And for the electric vehicle we will also going from crude oil refinery to give the same ground comparison, then go to power plant. The grid transmission of electricity, to battery charging from charge station, and finally used by motor to convert that energy into motion. In refinery product, internal combustion will use gasoline or diesel and electric vehicle will use long residue. The conversion rate of a petroleum refinery, also known as a refinery yield, can vary depending on the specific refinery configuration and the types of crude oil being processed. However, in general, the conversion rate of a petroleum refinery is typically around 85 to 90 percent in terms of energy content. This means that for every 100 units of energy in the crude oil feedstock, about 85 to 90 units of energy can be extracted in the form of refined petroleum products such as gasoline, diesel, jet fuel, heating oil, and other products. The remaining energy is typically lost as heat or used to power the refinery's own operations. We use the same percentage for both internal combustion and electric vehicle as it is not possible to refine crude oil into a single product. Each of these products has a different boiling point and other physical and chemical properties. Next we will viewing the electric vehicle process first as this will going trough a lot of process. Energy generation. We will use typical oil-fueled power plant for example. The conversion rate of energy from fuel to electricity in a steam power plant depends on various factors such as the type of fuel used, the efficiency of the boiler, the steam turbine, and the generator. Typically, the energy conversion efficiency of a modern steam power plant is around 30 to 45 percent. Now we break down the percentage of energy conversion at different stages of the process. 1. Boiler In the boiler, fuel is burned to generate heat, which is used to convert water into steam. The energy conversion efficiency of the boiler depends on several factors such as the type of fuel, the combustion process, and the heat transfer efficiency. Typically, the energy conversion efficiency of the boiler is around 80 to 90 percent. 2. Steam turbine. The steam generated in the boiler is passed through a steam turbine, which converts the thermal energy of the steam into mechanical energy. 
The energy conversion efficiency of the steam turbine depends on several factors such as the design of the turbine, the steam pressure, and temperature, and the quality of the steam. Typically, the energy conversion efficiency of a modern steam turbine is around 40 to 50 percent. 3. Generator The mechanical energy generated by the steam turbine is then used to drive a generator, which converts the mechanical energy into electrical energy. The energy conversion efficiency of the generator depends on several factors such as the design of the generator, the speed of the turbine, and the quality of the electrical load. Typically, the energy conversion efficiency of a modern generator is around 95 to 98 percent. Grid transmission The transmission losses depend on several factors, such as the distance between the power plant and the charging outlet or user, the capacity of the transmission lines, and the condition of the electrical grid. Typically, transmission losses range from 5 to 10 percent, so it's only 90 to 95 percent power remain. Charging The percentage of usable energy when charging an electric car battery can vary depending on several factors, such as the charging rate, the capacity of the battery, and the efficiency of the charging equipment used. The efficiency of the charging process typically ranges from 80 to 95 percent, depending on the type of charging equipment and the battery technology used in the electric vehicle. This means that during the charging process, some amount of energy is lost as heat due to the conversion of AC electricity from the grid into DC electricity to charge the battery. However, other factors such as the charging rate and battery capacity can affect the overall percentage of usable energy. Charging at a higher rate or with a higher capacity battery can cause the battery to heat up, which can reduce the efficiency of the charging process and result in more energy being lost as heat. As a result, the percentage of usable energy when charging an electric car battery can range from 70 to 95 percent, depending on the specific conditions of the charging process. Now, back to internal combustion. Transportation. The energy losses from transporting fuel from refineries to fuel stations can vary depending on various factors such as distance, mode of transportation, and efficiency of the transportation process. Let's say, the energy losses from transporting gasoline or diesel fuel from refineries to retail stations range from 6% to 10%. This means that the end user only receives about 90% to 94%. Here is a breakdown of some of the reasons and factors that can affect the energy losses from transporting fuel. 1. Distance The longer the distance between the refinery and the retail station, the higher the energy losses are likely to be due to factors such as fuel evaporation, leakage, and combustion. 2. Mode of transportation. The mode of transportation used to transport the fuel can also affect energy losses. For example, transporting fuel by pipeline is generally more efficient than transporting it by truck or rail, as pipelines have lower energy losses due to evaporation and leakage. 3. Weather conditions. Extreme weather conditions such as high temperatures can increase the energy losses due to fuel evaporation. Finally, Internal combustion engines, which power most cars, are not very efficient at converting the energy and fuel into useful work. The actual efficiency of a car engine depends on a variety of factors such as engine design, driving conditions, and maintenance. But in general, gasoline-powered engines typically have an efficiency of around 20 to 30 percent in converting the energy from fuel into mechanical energy to move the car. And diesel engines can have slightly higher efficiencies, ranging from 30 to 40 percent. It's worth noting that while internal combustion engines have improved over the years with the use of advanced technologies, such as fuel injection systems, variable valve timing, and turbocharging, the fundamental thermodynamic limitations of the engine's design limit how efficient it can be. Then, electric vehicle motor. The overall efficiency of the electric powertrain is estimated to be around 80 to 90 percent, which means that around 80 to 90 percent of the energy stored in the battery is converted into useful work to propel the vehicle forward. This is because electric motors are more efficient at converting electrical energy into mechanical energy than internal combustion engines are at converting the energy and fuel into mechanical energy. It's important to note that the efficiency of electric cars can vary depending on several factors such as the driving conditions, the size and capacity of the battery, and the design of the motor. Okay, now let's review the percentage again. For internal combustion, from 100 energy unit available in crude oil, 85% of the energy content converted into fuel, transported to the fuel station with remaining 90% fuel energy content, then used an engine with 20% conversion rate. That's mean only 15% of the initial energy usable to move the car. The same way for the upper line, and it's 34%. For the electric vehicle, from 100 energy unit available in crude oil, 
85% of the energy content converted into fuel. The fuel used to generate electricity through steam turbine with overall plant 30% conversion rate. Distributed trough grid transmission with 90% energy preserved in the way. Continued with 70% energy remain trough charging process into battery. And finally used to power the motor with 80% efficiency. That's mean only 13% of the initial energy usable to move the car. The same way for the upper line, and it's 33%. Pretty close right. But what if we use natural gas as fuel to generate the electricity, although the internal combustion car cannot use them, thus create an even ground? Generally power plant with gas turbine have 60% conversion rate, so that's mean the final conversion become 44%. That's 10% higher than the internal combustion one. But the same can be said if we use alternative fuel for the internal combustion. Let's say we use hydrogen-based fuel with efficiency up to 60%. That's mean the final conversion become 51%. Again, the same can be said for electric vehicle if we used fully renewable energy like hydroelectric and the others. But for this comparison we will use crude oil-based substance as base. So the internal combustion arguably takes the W in this one. Next is energy per kilometer. Let's take the data from the energy density before. For the internal combustion vehicle, it can travel 1,000 kilometers on 749 kilowatt hours, which gives an energy consumption of approximately 0.749 kilowatt hours per kilometer. For the electric vehicle, it can travel 650 kilometers on 100 kilowatt hours, which gives an energy consumption of approximately 0.15 kilowatt hours per kilometer. Electric vehicle is in win here but internal combustion can hold more energy with them hence can do more work. But, let's dig deeper in the topic for their use in different speed. The simple image more or less can be drawn like this. The peak curve of internal combustion is the optimum speed of the engine. At speeds below the optimum speed, the internal combustion engine's fuel efficiency is lower because the engine is not operating at its most efficient power output range. At lower speeds, the engine experiences higher frictional losses due to the internal resistance of the engine components such as pistons, bearings, and crankshafts. Meanwhile, at the optimum speed, the engine operates at its best efficiency, with the lowest possible frictional, thermal, and pumping losses, where it can produce the most power for the least amount of fuel. This speed is usually between 50 to 80 km per hour. For the electric vehicle, they have a more stable curve, meaning that they can produce consistent power across a range of speeds, making them more efficient overall. Unlike internal combustion with their engine friction, the lower value at beginning of electric vehicle curve is caused by rolling resistance, which is the force that resists the motion of a vehicle's wheels as they roll on the ground. This resistance is due to various factors, including tire deformation, surface roughness, and hysteresis losses in the tire material. Both internal combustion and electric vehicle experience this. But when driving at speeds above the optimum speed, both internal combustion engines and electric vehicle will require higher amounts of energy to maintain the speed. This is because the aerodynamic drag on the vehicle increases exponentially at higher speeds. Additionally, the engine's efficiency drops off at higher speeds due to increased thermal and pumping losses. It's 2 to 1 now. The last is energy loss usage. Let's examine the energy losses during idling, braking and unconstant acceleration for both types of vehicles. Idling. During idling, both internal combustion and electric vehicle vehicles still consume energy to keep the various interior devices running, such as air conditioning radio, and lights. However, EVs have an advantage in this area as they can turn off the electric motor when idling, while internal combustion vehicles cannot. For example, let's say, car engine consumes 1 liters of fuel per hour when idling. Converted using energy density from before, that's mean 10.7 kilowatt hours. With estimation the car drive for 40 kilometers in city and use the energy per kilo from the previous one, we get 29.96 kilowatt hours energy used. Compared to the energy loss from idling, that's 36% more energy consumed. So the electric vehicle takes this one. Braking. In an internal combustion vehicle, braking involves the conversion of kinetic energy into heat, which is then dissipated into the environment. On the other hand, electric vehicle use regenerative braking systems to recover some of the energy that would otherwise be lost during braking. This technology converts the kinetic energy of the vehicle into electrical energy, which is then stored in the battery for later use. For example, a car with a mass 1,200 kg going 60 km per hour. Using this formula, we found the kinetic energy in that motion is 0.046 kWh. Let's assume that the driver needs to brake 50 times during the trip, whether it's full stop for one or having the speed two times to make it even. 
That's mean 2.3 kilowatt hours of energy loss in one trip. Continuing the previous scenario, that's mean 7.7% more energy needed for that trip. Whereas, for electric vehicle the regenerative braking can recover around 70% of energy from that, which is only 2.3% more energy needed for that trip. Another W for the electric vehicle. Unconstant acceleration. Let's take it simple. We can use the previous graph for reference. In an internal combustion vehicle, power is delivered to the wheels through a complex mechanical system that includes a transmission, gears, and a clutch. This means that the power delivery is not always constant and the driver needs to shift gears to maintain the engine's optimal operating speed. Shifting gears also leads to some energy loss due to friction and other factors, which reduces the overall efficiency of the vehicle. In contrast, an electric vehicle uses an electric motor that delivers instant torque to the wheels without the need for a transmission or gears. This means that the power delivery is smooth and constant, and the driver does not need to shift gears. As a result, an electric vehicle can accelerate more quickly and efficiently than an internal combustion vehicle. Once again electric vehicle takes the W. Overall, seems like electric vehicle is far more superior in term of driving efficiency, energy-wise. But the internal combustion still got upper hand in the process of energy source, at least for now. But this also does not rule out the possibility this might change in different conditions. Internal combustion have upper hand in energy density in this current state of battery technology and for energy conversion rate using one way of same fuel source. An electric vehicle is better in energy per kilo due to its motor efficiency and for energy loss in driving due to its technological feature. Although the comparison of internal combustion versus electric vehicle seems even, truth is electric vehicle is inevitable. Like, if flying cars finally become a reality, they are more likely to be electric vehicle rather than internal combustion, with the condition that battery technology is much more advanced than now and have more powerful motor. Maybe even someday, electric vehicle might replace heavy-duty vehicle like weight train or cargo ship, and it is already starting. But in case when some unexpected event happen, such as natural disasters, it can heavily disrupt power grids and impact the use of electric vehicles in that area. But same can be said for internal combustion as the fuel used basically dependence on geopolitical factors. As fluctuations in fuel prices, and availability can impact the cost and accessibility of transportation. It's always exciting to think about the future and the possibilities that new technologies can bring. And that's it. See you next time. Thanks for watching. See ya.